I'm François Farquet. I work at Oracle Labs in, uh, in Zurich, Switzerland, and um, I'm a senior researcher there, part of the GraalVM team. And I talk today about GraalVM itself, uh, but also about uh, Renaissance Benchmark Suite, which is a suite uh, uh, we came up with uh, uh, with uh, university collaborators to squeeze more performance out of the, uh, the, the compiler. And I'll show how we did that. So, first of all, I start with uh, an introduction of uh, what is GraalVM. And there are different aspects. You may have heard of uh, native images, of, uh, of faster GIST compiler and stuff like this. So let's clarify things uh, earlier, uh, earlier, uh, early on. And um, so first of all, Graal is a compiler project. And um, so it's not meant to rewrite the old, uh, the old JDK, but to reuse the bits of OpenJDK, but replace the, the compiler itself by uh, a faster uh, compiler with a, high, with a focus on high performance. And that's what has been done. So you can run uh, any JVM language, Java, Scala, Groovy, Kotlin, whatever, uh, in the context uh, of OpenJDK. Uh, but w if you use GraalVM, you'll benefit from, from the Graal uh, compiler. Now, GraalVM can also run other languages like Ruby, R, Python, JS. Each, uh, each of these languages has a sub team which has implemented uh, the language on top of, uh, of the GraalVM um, API. So, uh, so this, is, this enables. Uh, polyglot programming, running the same process with uh, high efficiency, you can optimize through uh, the language bodies. Uh, it can also run native languages like C, C++, Rust, um, in, inside the JVM, so you can JIT compile those languages too, and also benefit from the, from the polyglot programming aspects. This is uh, a, a necessary bit for, all, for running all native extensions of, uh, of uh, dynamic languages like Python or or Ruby and R. Okay, so that's what uh, GraalVM can run, but it can run in different contexts. So I mentioned uh, the OpenJDK context, so as a just-in-time compiler, but it can also run uh, as part of the Node.js platform. So it can run all those languages uh, within uh, Node.js, and we have a Node uh, utility shipped with GraalVM. You can also run those languages inside the Oracle database. So instead of pulling your data out of the database and pushing it back after doing some manipulation, you can do uh, directly the, the operations uh, inside the database. And also, you can produce native images, so you can produce standalone binaries uh, from your, your applications. So this is a game changer in the, in the, for, the, for languages like Java and Scala, uh, because you can produce uh, highly uh, optimized uh, binary, which are very small, so it's uh, useful for uh, for the container world, for instance. And it also it also it can also start up very quickly and has a very smaller, uh, very small uh, memory footprint um, because it's uh, compiled ahead of time. Okay, so GraalVM comes um, in two flavor: the community edition because uh, it's open source; you can download the sources on GitHub. Uh, it, uh, it's free for development use, production use. Uh, and there's also an enterprise edition, which uh, gives additional performance and uh, security features. And there's also the Oracle uh, support for it. Note that the enterprise edition is free on Oracle Cloud. And now the Oracle Cloud also has uh, a free tier. So you can run basically enterprise for free on the free tier if you want to give it a try and, and compare that. Okay, but the um, main aspect of the talk is this Renaissance Benchmark Suite and how it relates to, to GraalVM. And um, so it's a, a suite of benchmark that has been open sourced uh, earlier this year. There is a website, renaissance.dev, it's, uh, it's, it's open source. And um, it's an extra uh, benchmarking suite. So first of all, what is a benchmark uh, and why would, do we need them? So benchmarks, are basically a sample uh, software that that um, is meant to be representative of programs you guys run uh, and that we run on our machines and on our clusters. And um, 
the goal is to have a, a very representative set of benchmarks. Uh, there's no competition between them. We just want a, a benchmark that span all kind of use cases and all kind of software uh, we run nowadays. So there are already existing uh, benchmarking suites like uh, the, the spec organization, which is a consortium of many uh, big companies uh, who came up with uh, benchmarks for the JVM. Uh, there are also universities who came up uh, um, as part of research uh, with uh, benchmarks, like the DACAPO benchmarks, for instance. And uh, so the question that arises is what, why do we come up with a new one? And um, the, the main reason here is that we noticed that uh, uh, the way we write software nowadays, I mean, the way we write software in general is evolving. What we are writing nowadays and the software we use nowadays is different than one we were using um, uh, 10 years ago, and there were interesting talks uh, yesterday about this. So the, every, everything is changing, and we need to keep up with this. So we have uh, new programming paradigms. We have uh, parallel collections, for join, asynchronous futures, actors, and all of that. And, and uh, long ago, this is something that, that simply didn't exist. Now we also have uh, frameworks to deal with uh, all of that complexity. Um, popular ones like uh, Spark for big data, uh, for stream processing. We have the JDK streams uh, introduced in Java 8. We have the, the Scala streams, uh, reactive extensions, ACA for actor-based programming, uh, Netty, which is very popular for network stuff. And, um, and we want to be sure that this is covered uh, uh, by the benchmark suite because uh, the benchmarks is our target for compiler developers, and we want to be sure that this is something we are we are good on, and we can give good performance to the users. So one part is the the software evolves, the way we write for software evolves, but on the other hand, the platform itself evolves. The JDK evolves. Um, we have now atomic operations everywhere, lock free data structures, non-blocking I/O, uh, etc. Invoke dynamic. It's a new bytecode uh, introduced in Java 7, but really. Uh, starting being used um, in, in Java 8 with, uh, with the JDK streams. And um, the, the benchmarking suites that have been introduced before um, in Java 8 existed, they simply do not cover these kinds of uh, code patterns. So what we can notice if we step back a little bit and look at uh, these two aspects, the way software is written and uh, the platform evolving, is that there is a common theme here is that we do more and more, uh, we use more and more concurrency and parallelism. And uh, it's important then to be very efficient at dealing with parallel workloads. And uh, yeah, if I, if I have one CPU doing most, the, most of the work and the other ones are idle, uh, there is something the, the, that is wrong and that could be optimized. So the Renaissance Benchmark Suite, there is um, a research paper, uh, you can find the reference down there, but it's also linked on the, on the renaissance.dev website. Um, the vision is to come up with a new set of benchmarks uh, that are modern and diverse, so modern in the sense that they use uh, the new technologies I, I mentioned earlier, and um, that uh, stress a lot uh, the, the, the VM and the compiler with concurrency workloads and, uh, and parallel workloads. And uh, that um, that also include uh, functional programming versus object-oriented uh, programming, uh, in order to cover all of those aspects. So you want, we want this to be diverse too. We want to keep that open source and an open process because we want to be stuck in the past. We want to keep that thing uh, evolving and have a collaborative effort and uh, and have people uh, contribute to it. And it's not a competition with other benchmark suites. Uh, because uh, everything is worth looking at, uh, even uh, workloads that have been written uh, uh, 20 years ago, it's good to be good at those, even, uh, even though we focus more nowadays on other kind of workloads, we don't want to regress on that, what has been done in the past, and, uh, and this, this, is, this means that it's not a competition, it's just a, a great addition. So, to come up with a new set of benchmarks that covers those different aspects. It's, it's a bit challenging because you have to find those workloads, to find what is, uh, what is important to people, what is the software people use, and what is popular nowadays. So 
tools have been written to collect uh, all kind of uh, of workloads, sample application demo demo workloads from different uh, with different projects, and um, we found roughly 100 candidate workloads, and then they have been analyzed to uh, to match uh, a set of criteria. So the criteria, uh, first of all, they have to be to use modern concurrency, so uh, highly parallel workloads using streams, using actor-based uh, uh, programming, using log-free data structures, and memory databases, etc. We want those benchmarks to be realistic. We want to be sure uh, that it's not completely artificial because it has to look like software people use. And they have to be diverse, meaning that uh, if we introduce like 20 Spark workloads and they all do the same thing, it's not very interesting. And we want to keep only one of them, for instance. And we want the, uh, those benchmarks to be deterministic. That's very important for benchmarking. If you, if you run the thing, twice, you, you, you want to be sure that it runs exactly the same thing. On the other hand, you want to be sure uh, to avoid uh, some pitfalls. For instance, uh, you want to be sure to have a source code uh, because uh, you, for analysis of what's going on, uh, it's better to have source code. Uh, you want to avoid being stuck in the past with workloads that are uh, not being used anymore. Or uh, uh, you want to avoid timeouts, resource leaks, and uh, and stuff like this. Uh, but you also want uh, an open process and open source because it enables uh, source code level analysis. But it also makes makes it easier for the community to get involved and to suggest new benchmarks. And uh, after some point, we may also see that some benchmarks are not relevant anymore and may deprecate them and even retire them. So. Doing this analysis, we came up with a set of 21 benchmarks uh, that are in white here uh, that have been released at the, uh, earlier this year. And uh, in green, it's uh, new ones that have been introduced uh, since then, uh, this summer. And um, there are uh, like six or seven uh, Apache Spark benchmarks in there. There are uh, Finagle benchmarks uh, from Twitter. There are um, uh, in-memory da databases, uh, uh, streams, uh, benchmarks, and uh, Scala compiler benchmark, uh, and uh, and then yeah, and uh, a few others. So to justify that list, we collected a bunch of metrics to assess the quality of those benchmarks. So here is a list of uh, 11 metrics that we found uh, in interesting to uh, to model the, what the benchmarks were doing. And um, they are directly related concurrency metrics, like the number of synchronized blocks you have uh, in your, uh, that are executed, the number of um, uh, blocks or, or methods, uh, the number of wait and notify that uh, that are directly related to concurrency, uh, the number of atomic operations, the number of thread parking, etc. Then, indirectly related to concurrency, we have um, CPU utilization, because if uh, you have uh, 16 cores and one is uh, doing all the work and the other one's none, that's something you want to capture. Cache miss too, uh, because if you have uh, thread contention, that will increase the cache miss rate. And also other metrics uh, to assess the quality of the ben those benchmarks is the object-oriented abstractions, like uh, number of objects and arrays allocated, number of methods invoked, and also a uh, final metric about the, the number of um, executed invoked dynamic bytecodes, uh, because it's a new uh, bytecode introduced in Java uh, uh, 7, and we want to be sure to cover that too. Okay, then let's have a look at the numbers. Uh, those those um, metrics have been normalized, so divided by the number of reference cycles to make sure that we can compare them. And um, if we look at the synchronized uh, metric, we can see that the Renaissance uh, benchmark is the first bar on the, uh, on the chart as a good spread and um, covers well 
the, the synchronized uh, methods. Um, some others are, are quite, some other suites are, are quite similar uh, in that regard. The spec JVM one is, is quite good though. Now if you look at atomic operations, uh, also Renaissance has a good spread. Spec JVM is the one with the least. Down the number of invoke dynamic instructions, you can see that in the Scala bench suite there is none. In Dacapo and Spec JVM there are very few. And in Renaissance there is a good spread. But to get a better feeling of those 11 metrics, we would like to see how they uh, correlate with each other. So we can use a recommend technique, uh, dimension, dim dimensionality reduction technique, which is uh, PCA, uh, to project that into, um, in, into a smaller space and analyze the, the weight of each uh, component, of each metric in each principal component. So if we do this, we end up with the following chart with the principal component one on the x-axis and principal component two on the, on the y-axis. And uh, let's look at uh, what, uh, what are the weights in there. And uh, for principal com component one, we see that uh, object-oriented programming um, metrics dominate uh, with mostly a uh, number of objects and, uh, uh, and array allocated and method calls. And um, we can see that it's similar to the other suites because it's spread along, among, along the x-axis um, for Renaissance just like the other suites. But if you look at principal component two, it's the concurrency primitive, so atomic and, uh, and thread parking. And uh, we have a very good spread here, so we cover those aspects uh, very well. Now for the principal component three and four, the number three is uh, concurrency primitives too, uh, the cash miss rate and uh, weight and notify. And those are a bit more spread uh, in Renaissance and also uh, invoke dynamic is uh, much more spread. Uh, this is principal component four uh, in, in, that, uh, in the, the Y axis. So as a summary, for the diversity of the benchmarks, we have a good representation of concurrency. And we have a good representation of uh, modern language features, so lambda streams, etc. And um, when it comes to object orientation, we can come to the conclusion that it's similar to the other suites. OK, so all that explanation to convince you that those benchmarks are of good quality and that they cover aspects that are not covered by the other suites and especially that they focus on concurrency and parallelism. But now why have we done all this and spent all this effort coming with new benchmarks? Uh, so the, the initial motivation was to be sure to cover all the, 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 the software space, right? To have a good, a good sample uh, of what people use. Um, but now that we have that and we, had, we have confirmed that we have a good uh, a good representation of modern workloads, uh, can the compiler be better at running those workloads? So it has been investigated um, intensively and uh, as part of uh, the GraalVM compiler, the, those benchmarks have, have been used to come up with new compiler optimizations, um, mostly related to, to concurrency then. So you can see escape analysis with uh, atomic operations. So escape analysis is um, compiler optimization that can reduce uh, the, um, the number of allocations. So that will also reduce the, the GC pressure and, and also produce uh, um, more efficient machine code. Uh, so escape analysis in the context of atomics uh, was a new optimization. Uh, also loop-wide loop loop lock crossing, uh, meaning uh, uh, optimizing the synchronized blocks, uh, atomic operation conditioning also for atomics, method and all simplification uh, for these new bytecodes uh, with Invoke Dynamic. So great, we can make new optimization and make the, uh, the compiler faster thanks to those benchmarks. Now we can also look at existing optimization that are part of the compiler. And uh, we have noticed that, uh, that three main um, uh, our compiler optimization uh, were helping the Renaissance benchmarks uh, a lot. So that's uh, speculative ground motion, loop vectorization, and, um, and dominance-based application simulation. 
So now in the research paper, you'll, you can also find the, um, uh, the impact of each individual uh, uh, compiler optimization uh, uh, compared to, uh, yes, when you, when you enable or disable just that optimization, you can measure the performance of your benchmark. And you can see, so the first, it's a bit small, but the first four rows are the four new optimization, and the last three rows are the, the, the existing one. And, um, and uh, the first box is the Renaissance benchmarks, and then you have the other um, uh, popular suites, Scala Bench, Dakar, and Spec JVM. And uh, interestingly, what we can notice is that the four new optimization have a, a, a very good and positive impact uh, on the Renaissance benchmarks, right? Because it has been designed to make those faster. But we can measure on the other benchmarks, and we see that they have not a lot of impact. Also, because I mean, if you optimize invoke dynamic and you have no invoke dynamic, that's uh, that's normal that you will not get more performance out of it. But uh, but even the other uh, concurrent concurrency optimizations, uh, we're not doing much. Still a little bit. You can see uh, you can see some little improvement, but not uh, very significant. So if you, we take those seven optimizations, we can see that uh, they have a positive impact of uh, more than 6% on the Renaissance benchmarks and uh, roughly three or, or more or less on, on the other suites. Uh, I think most of them are community. Uh, loop vectorization, no. But the other ones, I think they are community, but I, I would need to double check. Okay, then um, the conclusions about those compiler optimization is that they help the, to identify new, uh, new optimization, new cut patterns that could be uh, optimized uh, further. And uh, we could also uh, identify high impact optimization uh, that were already uh, present in the, in, the, in the compiler. So we can see that uh, it's critical to have good benchmarks for, for uh, a compiler team because we can increase the compiler performance for everyone. Okay, so related to the question, this is the performance of uh, GraalVM compared to Hotspot, which is the default uh, uh, compiler in, the, um, in OpenJDK. And this is the, the 21, or yes, the 21 benchmarks that were initially released uh, um, in Renaissance, so you can see that uh, on the far right you have the geo mean, and you can see that the Enterprise Edition is 32% faster than uh, uh, than uh, OpenJDK, and that the uh, GraalVM Community Edition is 6% faster than uh, OpenJDK, and uh, there are also individual um, uh, speed ups. You can see, for instance, the the, the big boss. It's uh, it's an Apache Spark uh, benchmark, Naive Base, which is 3x faster. Uh, running on GraalVM. And um, another one that may be interesting is the Dotty benchmark, which is the fifth or sixth. And um, because I know that there are quite a lot of Scala people in here, um, and uh, Dotty is, is the Scala 3 compiler, uh, the performance with the Scala 2 compiler is, uh, is also, is also very, very similar on, uh, on GraalVM. So you get a, a 37 performance boost uh, if you use enterprise and you get a 20% uh, boost if you just uh, uh, switch to GraalVM community edition. So it's basically a drop-in replacement. So just give it a try. Even for compiling files, it's, it's already much better. Uh, and running the, the workloads, um, it, it depends on your workload, but uh, definitely measure it's worth it. And um, uh, yeah. So yeah, I haven't, yeah, sorry, I haven't uh, clarified the, the, the chart, the EE means enterprise edition, right? In the, so that's the red bar and CE uh, C is community edition. So if the, the, those two are same. Okay, so as a conclusion, we have uh, introduced this new set of uh, benchmarks. Uh, I must say that it's not only uh, Oracle Labs that has done that. It is, there was uh, collaboration with uh, 
five, I think, universities all around the world. And now we also collaborations with uh, other big companies. So it's good to see an interest and see that those, uh, those uh, workloads will continue to evolve. So we came up with a new and open benchmarking suite for the JVM, modern and diverse, as it can be shown in the, in the paper and in the diversity analysis. And they better represent uh, modern JVM frameworks and features that are very popular nowadays. And it's beneficial for compiler development. It's also uh, beneficial for um, GC developers, for tools implementer. So benchmarking suites are not only uh, a VM developer thing. It's for anyone who want to measure uh, performance of a given platform. So it's uh, an open source project. It's an open process. So contrib contributions are very welcome. Uh, there is at the moment someone from Microsoft who is writing a contributing a benchmark. Uh, we had been uh, we had feedback on the Finagle benchmarks from the Twitter people. Uh, we had bug reports from the SAP people. Uh, we could spot a bug uh, in. Uh, in uh, IBM virtual machine that has been reported and fixed. So it's really helping everyone. And, um, and uh, if you are part of, uh, of one of such big framework that, uh, that is trendy nowadays, maybe, that, and, and runs on the JVM, maybe it's worth spending a little effort to contribute, uh, in, in, to contribute a benchmark, because then VM developers like us We'll spend a lot of time trying to optimize it further and, uh, and, and try to squeeze more performance out of it. And then running on those, on those, uh, uh, running those workloads uh, or similar workloads on, the, uh, on GraalVM, for instance, will, uh, will probably be faster over time. So, so please be involved or discuss with me if you, if you have uh, a potential benchmark candidate. Uh, then the, there is uh, a committee that will vote uh, for, for new releases, which benchmark we should retire, which benchmark we should introduce, etc. And the goal is to keep this thing uh, uh, evolving in an open manner. And, uh, and uh, we hope that this project will continue, uh, continue to grow and keep up to date and not be stuck in the past like it has been the case for other uh, other benchmarking suite, uh, but uh, we are confident that we'll we'll be able to do that. So I, I come to the end of my presentation, and I thank you very much. And I'm uh, open to discuss uh, further about GraalVM or Renaissance with any of you uh, in the hallway, or maybe if we have time for a few questions. We have time. Uh, any questions? This is great. I'm really excited about GraalVM, so thanks for coming to talk about it. Is there, how do optimizations, I know uh, Twitter has been contributing some optimizations to the community edition. Is there a way, um, is there any flow from work that goes into the enterprise edition to community edition, or are we waiting for people to only submit contributions? Like, i.e., I might imagine a model where after two or three years or 20 years, you would take optimizations that only exist in the Enterprise Edition and move them in the Community Edition. I just would lo love to hear about how, how you think about what goes into each of those uh, two editions. I cannot really com uh, comment on the business model because I'm an engineer and I'm not a manager or director or whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, we have a lot of contributions uh, to the, to the Grail compiler itself. Uh, from many different people, so it's good because uh, uh, if we if we keep making the, the community edition uh, better over time, it will benefit everyone. On the other hand, having an enterprise edition uh, can help uh, funding tens and tens of people to make the community and the enterprise edition faster. So I think it's, it's an interesting business model because uh, you, for, for such an investment, it's a project that started eight years ago and uh, Oracle starts getting money uh, uh, for this project only in 2019. It has been, uh, it has been uh, announced as a product in 2019. It's also part of the cloud strategy, et cetera. So uh, I cannot comment on the, on the business itself, but, uh, but for, for compiler optimizations, a lot of time has been spent into, um, into uh, an enterprise um, inliner. Uh, which is which is very very efficient. There is a paper about it, and uh, and uh, feel free to check it out. But uh, but any contribution is welcome, and uh, and will continue to be welcome. 
Great, thank you very much, Francois. That's all we have time for. Uh, the next talk starts here in 10 minutes. Thank you.